In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please be seated. Good morning, everyone. Happy Easter. Hey, listen, we've still got folks uh, coming in the back, and we, uh, if, if you've got room next to, your, next to you, you might uh, move over just as folks come in over the next few minutes. You give them room to sit on an aisle, maybe. Uh, it's great to have this problem with crowds this morning. We've, uh, we've had crowds all morning. We had the largest crowd we've ever had on the beach this morning. Maybe we were guessing, we don't even know, between three and 4,000 people were on the beach this morning, and uh, 9 o'clock this morning was, I think, one of the biggest Easter crowds I've ever seen. We had chairs everywhere in here, and here we are again. So it, uh, nothing delights a priest more than lots of people, right? That's a good thing. Anyway, it's good to see you all today. I'm going to go ahead and, and for me, just sort of say something, uh, name the, the elephant in the room, at least for me, and that is, uh, this is my last sermon as rector of Christ Church. And so, I, but I don't say that for, as a downer. Um, I say that because it's a special moment for me. Um, and I hope that it, uh, when my sermon's over, that it's a special moment for you. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I should just quit now. <laughs> just leave you with memories, right? Oh, Lord help us. So anyway, it's, uh, this is a real joy uh, for me today. It's been that kind of a day, uh, all day. And um, I'm delighted to be able to, to share my, my last sermon as a parish priest. Uh, I look forward to preaching other sermons in the future, but just won't be as a rector of Christ Church, or, and it won't be as a parish priest. So... Uh, this is a big, big day for me. Um, this is, um, Easter is simply, for us as people of faith, Easter is simply our celebration of the fact that this love that came into the world in Jesus the Christ, this love that saves us a little bit more every day, that is, um, that is always, I think, trying desperately to set us free. To realize our human potential. This love, this love death could not hold. Not even death itself could quiet the power of this love. This saving love. And if you went home just with that, you'd have enough. That, what that means is, as people of faith, the more that I bathe in and spend time in the power of this saving love, this liberating love, the more I'm going to realize, the more I'm going to realize my human potential, my spiritual potential as, potential as a human being. And so, you know, I want you to hear that this morning because um, my, my angle on today's text, gospel text from Mark, is I'm focusing on the women in the story, at least starting there. And what I think they found, I, what I, the question I had this week was I was trying to figure out why what would move them? What gave them the courage, um, even the courage? I mean, this man was seen as scandalous at the time. He died a horrible death. Uh, and what gave them the courage? What was it that moved them or drove them to get up on that, that morning after the Sabbath, in the darkness of that morning, to go out as a group of women to secure the finest of spices, I'm sure it was not easy for them to find, to anoint his body. They didn't even think they, I'm not even sure they thought they were going to be able to get to his body because there's a question of will somebody be there to help us roll the stone away, right? They're not even sure what they're going to find when they, when they get there. But the question for me this week is what really, what was really driving them to be there in that moment when others were, were hiding, when others were trying to get away as fast as they could from Jerusalem. What moved that that band of women? And they're in every gospel account, that group of women. What was it? The more I pondered that, there was an African bishop. I heard him sing a song recently, and these words really captured me, and they're words that I've held on to in recent weeks. This African bishop sang a song about God's love. And he sang, it was, uh, he was singing it to a parishioner of his in a desperate moment. And he sang with the mother of this child, this mother who lost her child. He began to sing about God's love is what 
wipes away our tears. God's love, he went on to sing, is what drains our fears. Is what drains our fears. And it was, it, was with, it was with that in mind that I began to understand, I think, where these women were this morning, what they were thinking. You see, I think that what happened was they encountered, they had an experience. Their lives collided with a love that was, we all know, extraordinary. It was unlike anything they'd ever experienced before. The plight of women at that time was, was pretty dark and desperate. And so here was, here was this, this love, this, this God's love embodied in the life of this man Jesus, the one we call the Christ. And their time spent within their time spent with him, they were held by a love unlike anything they'd ever experienced. It was so encouraging and full of hope. Again, it was so liberating. It challenged them to, to dream again and to wonder about their own human potential and maybe their own purpose for being. But most of all, you know what it was? God's love, the bishop sang, drains us of our fears. You know what they found in him that they'd never found anywhere else, more than anything else in life? They found in the power of that love a safety. They were safe. Unlike any other place, there was no other place in their lives where they felt so safe, so affirmed, so encouraged, so affirmed and encouraged. And so, of course they're going to be there this morning. Of course they're going to be there. And the power of that love, loving him beyond death, loving him beyond what appears to be, seems to be the end. Doesn't matter to them. But he has so gifted them with this security in the power of this love. They're so safe in that love now that all they can do is just be there to give thanks, to anoint his body in thanksgiving. Because as far as they're concerned, they think it's over. Perhaps, perhaps what we knew for a moment is gone now. And so they make their way there to, to honor a life that has changed their lives, that has, again, raised them up and given them hope and new perspective and a, a fresh disposition on life, a fresh understanding of who they are, that they are valued and that they have purpose. So all of this, I'm, all this is going through my mind, of course. And then I heard this song uh, this past week. Um, it was a song from, this is really funny. How many of you remember the animated film Camelot? Okay, look, this is more hands than nine. I got about a dozen hands here. At nine o'clock, I couldn't find a hand. And this, is, this goes back about 20 years. The animated film Camelot came out about 20 years ago. And most folks don't remember the animated film. What they remember is a piece of music that was part of the score in that film. And this past week, uh, Andrea Bocelli and Celine Dion sang it uh, in my hearing. And uh, not, not personally, of course. I called them. They came over. <laughs> uh, uh, see, I'm going to start getting, this is bad, because if I start getting like this on my last day. Uh, but anyway, as they were singing those, that, those beautiful words, let this be our prayer, just like every child. Lead us to that place, guide us with your grace, to that place where we'll be safe. And suddenly I realized what the women at the tomb had found in Jesus. That longing that we have deep inside ourselves, doesn't matter who we are, men, women, doesn't matter how old you are, we're all longing for that same safe place the place where we hear the encouraging words, the comforting words. And by the way, here's a message you need to take home with you today. It is, if you're loving well, you're creating a safe place for the people around you. If you aren't creating a safe place for the people around you, then you need to step back and figure out how to love better. 
and, and, and that's not just something you turn on or off. That's something you come and spend time in and you bathe in and you study and you work on it for the sake of those you say you love. Love equals safety. Love equals safety. I've asked the choir, a couple of choir members, to sing that for me. Can you sing? A, just the, they're just going to sing the chorus for me this morning because I want you to know what I'm talking about. What peace is. Give us faith so we'll be safe. And that's, that's the message of Easter in a nutshell. Uh, Jesus, in Holy Week and Good Friday, he enters into the darkness of my life and yours. And this morning, as the tomb is opened up and the light of God's glory shines out from the, the darkness of that tomb where all of our darkness and sin and brokenness and despair s remains, he invites us to follow him, to come out in faith and to join him as we move to that place of, of living more safely, spiritually speaking, more safely in a place where um, it satisfies our deepest longings. And so in that moment after I heard that, I have to tell you I was back in a, I was back at Wilson Children's Hospital about 20, this is probably 20, this could have been 25 years ago. Um, I, you know how you remember certain moments in your life, they're just really special, they're extraordinary. I call it, they're sacred moments. Every moment's sacred, but some are a little more sacred, you know. And um, I was there with a, 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 a little girl who'd been there for months. Her dad and she and her dad were uh, parishioners in this congregation I was serving at the time. And so we spent a lot of time together there at, in the hospital. And on this particular night, uh, she was tired and you could, she was really wearied by it all. And um, so was her dad. And he was up in bed holding her, and I'm sitting in a chair over on the side. And the, it was that one of those precious moments where she looked at him and she said, Daddy, she says, I'm not scared. She said, you make me safe. And I realized that's, that's our potential. That's our spiritual potential. If she only knew that she was sitting with a father and a priest who were very fragile that night and who were very afraid. And yet God broke into that room through the words of a little girl and reminded us of his holy presence and encouraged us and held all of us. And in that moment, as I saw them sitting in that bed, I realized this week as I look back on that image, um, they were safe. Do you see? Do you understand? They were safe. Didn't matter what the world or life or disease or broken. It doesn't matter what it tries to do to us. If you're in a right place, and her dad and I talked about this later, she, he said, Rick, I couldn't have handled this a year ago. He said, our journey together and my journey in and through the life of the church and my understanding of the power of this love in my life, he says, that's the only thing that sustains me right now in helping my daughter through this. So I get that. I get that. See, that if, and it's more I thought about this, I realized over the, my, I've been here for almost 18, 17 and a half years, and I've been the priest in charge for about 14, 15 of those years. And I realized in thinking about this sermon today that that's been my goal this has been my goal for all these years. It's that simple. It's that simple, and yet it's that terribly complicated. 
and we've had to work really, really hard. But my goal has been, has been to create in the power of this love that death could not hold, that is saving us and trying desperately to free us, to liberate us a little bit more every day and to encourage us and empower us to live better, to realize our human potential. What I've realized is, is that what I've worked the hardest to do is try to create a safe place. That's what's driven me. That simple. And that terribly difficult. To try to create a safe place where people could come here, where they could come here, and we weren't focused on agreement on everything, because I got news for you, you don't agree on anything. <laughs> Nobody agrees on anything. It's absolutely amazing to me that husbands and wives will come to church and be upset with somebody else's position on something when I know the two of them don't agree on several other things. <laughs> absolutely blows my mind. I don't get it. And I've said this to ad nauseum around here. I'm, you get to a point where you just get in people's faces and say, wake up. Wake up. The radical edge of the gospel that's all about this love that death could not hold. It's not about agreement. And by the way, it doesn't shield you from bad things happening. This love, in fact, is where we find community. It's where we find, communi it's where we find communion in spite of our differences. Because the goal is not agreement. The goal is love. And guess what? The more you learn about this love and the more it sinks into your life and changes you from the inside out and makes you a safe place for others. Unafraid to be a safe place for others. The more we witness to the power of that love. You know what we learn to do? We learn to disagree well. That's been my marching orders for the past however many years I've been leading Christ Church. We're going to learn how to disagree well because everybody out there thinks that the goal is agreement. The Cuban people have this wonderful saying. They say that the extremes touch each other. We haven't figured that out yet in this country. The, the Cuban people say the extremes touch each other, and that's because they see both extremes as destructive. And if you haven't figured that out yet, we've got a long way to go. The answer has been and always will be in that radical middle. That radical middle. That terrible place of tension and yet that beautiful dynamic place of creativity and wonder and hope for the world. It's mine and yours to learn to witness to something that's greater than ourselves, something that, we, something that has the power to change the world. It's all wrapped up in the power of this love. And again, the more that you and I tap into that power and live it, the world, others around us begin to feel safe. They're encouraged to come closer and wonder out loud with us. I told this story again, at, at, um, and I'm closing. I'm getting close. The, <laughs> my problem this morning is there's so much I want to say, and you can't. And, but I'm going to tell a story I've told before because it really is my most... It's, I have two moments in my life here that were, just, that were just extraordinary to me. One was when a young man in the back of my adult forum said, I don't believe in the resurrection. And that to me was wonderful. It was beautiful. Because we had created a safe place for him to say that. I didn't agree with him but he knew he was welcome here and that we were going to let him learn about all these things and the power of that love that we would have for him and that we, he would expect, we would expect him to have for us. The other moment was a moment when um, uh, somebody walking by my office said uh, one morning, uh, sort of yelled in, hey, Rick, and I said, um, I said, hey, and I said, what you doing? He said, going to play golf. I said, who are you going with? And he said, so-and-so. So I'm sitting there working away at my desk. And he's gone. And about a couple minutes later, I realized who he just said. And I said, there's no way those two are playing golf together. It just, you know how you have one of those moments? Jumped up from my desk and ran out to the parking garage. And the, they were still there pulling out of the parking deck. And I'm, I'm like, roll it down. 
And I'm like, the two of you? And the one who come, came to the office says, I know, uh, it's too late. We love each other. There is no more red person at Christ Church. There is no more blue terse person at Christ Church. Greater than what divides them is, their, is this love that has empowered them to create a safe place in which to dwell. And that's what has spilled over. It's that very thing that has spilled over onto this community. We don't compromise ourselves at all. We just encourage. We create a safe place for people to come in. We encourage very dynamic, open, honest conversation. And we believe somehow in that marvelous, messy tension that we're tapping into a greater truth and a power of a love to save us all, to set us free, to save us a little more every day. And I need you to believe in that. I need you to believe in that. I need you to hope for that. I need you to live it. I need you to study it. I need you to worship it. I need you to not settle for anything less because if you choose not to settle for anything less, it's the greatest gift you give to your family and your coworkers and all those you love. And, and what a great blessing to the world. Let this be our prayer. Just like every child, guide us with your grace. Lead us to, with, with faith, through faith. Lead us to that place where we can all feel safe. Safe in your loving arms. Amen.